directing research programs. Daryl joined the Miller Thermal team after 18 years of contract research and development at Battelle Memorial Institute. The results of his efforts at Battelle led to an IR-100 award in 1975, of which he was co-recipient. Our collective experience uh, dates back to 1985, where we had done work on the, the original water-cooled HVOF system that, uh, that was put on the market. At that time, we were able to identify and publish the sensitivity of that particular system to water temperature and flow. Our own present work is centered around the torch design and parameter development. We're using a water-cooled system as opposed to an air-cooled. The water-cooled systems uh, collectively have the advantage of a longer heating, uh, combustion, and acceleration zone and less substrate heating. In addition to, uh, to that, they use a powder particle size distribution that is wider than the air-cooled devices and therefore less costly and uh, less susceptible to process parameters. The water-cooled device which we're working on and which we're using now uses about half the gas consumables of the other water-cooled devices that we have, uh, that we have worked with so there is a cost consideration there. And yet we have not sacrificed the uh, powder mass throughput of those devices so that we are production ready and production capable. Our present nozzle and combustion chamber uh, development is headed by a team which has 30 years experience in nozzle design and combustion design for plasma, flame, electric arc, and HVOF. The team collectively has many more years experience than that. The objective of our development is to produce a production ready torch that produces high quality coatings in a consistent manner. Our present product does do that and we are continuing to work on improvements to that product. Our nozzle life uh, is unequaled we have nozzles which have been spraying in production situations now for uh, a year to two years. And unless they're physically damaged by accident or carelessness, they just don't seem to wear out nearly as quickly as the others. And the daily maintenance is minimal on the torch itself. Metallurgist John Krebsbach is well qualified for his position with several years of experience in the areas of thermal spray product design and testing. He has designed and modified numerous combustion and electric arc guns, thermal spray equipment, and accessories. He continues to work on developing the optimum operating parameters for combustion and electric arc equipment, investigating the efficiency of dust collecting systems, and thermal spray powder manufacturing process development. One of my primary functions here at Miller Thermal is to work with the HVOF system, and in particular, developing the parameters and developing or modifying any of the HVOF gun components. One cannot speak separately of parameter development without speaking also of powder development. Powder development has many factors uh, which can or cannot create problems with your HVOF spraying process, uh, many of which are powder size, powder mesh distribution, uh, the thermal physical properties of the material and the manufacturing process. The parameters are then chosen around the particular powder size and those parameters that are of particular importance are fuel oxygen ratios, uh, the total gas flow and uh, the feed rate and there are some other ones that are, are a little bit less critical. Spray distance is another important one. From that, we try to optimize the parameters, um, whether it be through statistical methods or non-statistical methods, based on what we know has worked in the past and based on the particular material of interest, whether it's a ceramic, whether it's a metallic material or whether it's a carbide. Uh, I want to show you some of the 
microstructures that we can obtain using the current HVOF system. Uh, I think also the work that um, is of importance would be the nozzle development that we have done or that we have been working on uh, throughout the past few years that we've had this system. What we are about to show you are three general microstructures. Uh, the first one is a Alloys International Material 1110, which is an aluminum oxide sprayed using hydrogen fuel gas. And the second one is a carbide, which is an Alloys International Material 1173, which contains a 17% cobalt. Um, and then the third one is an Alloys International M500, which is similar to a Hastelloy C composition. The latter two use propylene fuel gas. And as Daryl alluded to earlier, the total gas consumption is considerably lower than some of the other HVOF water-cooled systems in the market today. This is a typical microstructure of a AI-1173, which has been HVOF sprayed using a propylene fuel gas. The microstructure is shown, uh, and you can see that it has a very high carbide, that very high carbide percentage out of solution, and that it is uh, very uniformly distributed throughout. The interface can be seen at the bottom of the viewer, and we use an aluminum oxide grit as the grit blasting media, and there does not appear to be any interface contamination. More importantly, you will notice that the porosity levels are low and that the uniformity of the carbide is excellent. The second microstructure involves an Alloys International material M500, which is similar to a Hastelloy C composition. One of the more important things that we do here in the lab is use etchants to reveal various microstructural features in the coatings. And this particular one has been etched. Uh, I do not have the composition at this time. And as you're looking at this microstructure, you will notice that it does display uh, many more features that you would not have available in the unetched condition. The structure um, with the base metal on the bottom side of the viewer is pretty much removed because of the etchant that was used. And the coating itself, again, shows very high uniformity. Um, unfortunately, the oxides cannot readily be detected because of the etchant, but the porosity levels are very low. The previous material, the M500, was sprayed using a propylene fuel gas. This third one is the AI-1110, which is aluminum oxide, sprayed with hydrogen gas at approximately 1,670 SCFH. The microstructure itself is a little difficult to see, so I use this pointer here. Uh, you'll notice below the pointer is the base material, above the pointer to this level right here is the top of the coating. The typical thickness of the coatings that we do here are ten thousandths unless we're doing some sort of special testing. Uh, above the pointer level is the mount material. As Paul is traversing across the microstructure, you'll notice that it does possess a high degree of coating density and does not exhibit any cracking. The testing capabilities that we have here at Miller Thermal consists of superficial hardness, the micro hardness which Paula is attending to now, uh, 
general microstructural evaluations using metallographs, uh, bond testing. We have also surface profilometer tests that we'll do. Uh, these are all common tests when an HVOF sample is sprayed up. Paul Wolcott has been associated with the design, programming, and implementation of computer-based systems for over 15 years. His principal duties have been in research and development and include microprocessor-based system designs, assembly and high-level programming, systems integration, prototype development, and project management. Prior to joining Miller Thermal, Paul was an electronic engineer and project manager in R&D at Hughes Aircraft Company and a consultant engineer for PAC Engineering and Mini Systems Associates. Yeah, this is our uh, model 4500 computerized plasma control system. It consists uh, of the uh, operator interface here, or, uh, which is um, an integrated portion of the control module, and then our gas module over here, which uh, contains our mass flow controls um, and so forth uh, for the process gases. Um, the 4500 system is, of course, the most sophisticated uh, uh, computerized plasma control system available. Uh, it uh, has the uh, built-in abilities to do closed-loop uh, control of powder feed rate, and of course, as I mentioned, we, it uh, contains mass flow controls uh, for the process gases. And of course, for the power end of it, uh, it has the ability to close loop on current uh, system or gun power, and then of course, our proprietary ability to close loop on net energy, which is the actual uh, power output uh, of the gun. Um, the system is, uh, although it's, it is very sophisticated system, it's very easy to operate. <clears throat> uh, we have uh, everything is uh, uh, accessed via a main menu. Uh, and that includes running the process, uh, developing recipes, uh, and analyzing the data from a process run, uh, uh, tape backup and restore functions, system utilities, <clears throat> and of course we have built-in uh, system diagnostics in the system. So although it, it is very sophisticated, it is very uh, a very uh, simple system to utilize because of its uh, menu-driven operation. Um, we have uh, uh, the, well, the abilities of this system or whatever, uh, as far as the built-in diagnostics and its closed-loop uh, capabilities, uh, far exceed any uh, uh, system that's available today. Uh, we are also uh, developing um, a, uh, a computerized uh, HVOF system or whatever that will have uh, the, the basic look and so forth will be identical to this, and it will have uh, the same capabilities except that it will be for HVOF control. Tony Herbert has been associated with the electronics field since joining the United States Navy as an electronics warfare technician in 1983. Prior to joining Miller Thermal Incorporated, he worked for an electrical firm as an electronics technician, installing radar, voice communication, and related electrical systems aboard U.S. Navy vessels. At Miller Thermal, Tony works with developing and prototyping new equipment. Within our systems here at Miller Thermal, a lot of our control is microprocessor based. We produce almost all of our software here in-house using the tools available. Um, my involvement with the 3400 is primarily with the igniter system. By pressing one switch light on the 3400 control console, you can ignite and sense the, uh, the presence of ignition of the 3400 top gun. If for any reason the 3400 should extinguish the flame from the top gun, the igniter will sense that immediately and send a signal to the 3400 to shut down all gases to prevent the escape of any flammable or dangerous gases into the, into the space. Vern Elke has worked with electronics and computer systems for seven years. His duties include component level repair, systems design and implementation, and network design and implementation. 
At Miller Thermal, Mr. Elke is responsible for prototyping, installation, and troubleshooting of the 4,500 computerized plasma systems and related components. Many of our products here at Miller Thermal start right here in our uh, labs, our prototyping labs. And this is a good example. This is our newest powder feeder hopper. It's the 1270. It's completely um, computerized. And items like this are designed from start to finish in our labs. Most of the equipment is not only designed here, but we put it through extensive testing also. So we are able to see any kind of failures that are going to happen previous to it going out into the field. Alec Krakava has been with Miller Thermal since 1987. He began in assembly, moved to the machine shop, and for the last year has been working as a spray technician exclusively on the HVUF project. Uh, we are right now inside a Top Gun booth, which is a dedicated booth for a HVUF system. Now the Top Gun uh, research has been going on now for over two years, and I have been working on this for more than a year and a half. Uh, basically, the Top Gun uh, system consists of four basic components. It's the gun itself, the control console, powder hopper, and a temperature controlled heat exchanger. Now there's a variety of uses for uh, Top Gun coatings, ranging from uh, wear protection, anti-corrosion protection, and a thermal and electrical uh, barrier. Um, as far as uh, the research goes, we do most our own initial testing with different p materials, but of course if the customer comes to us saying we want to try this this new powder, we will go and uh, initiate uh, research based upon that request. The gun itself is uh, designed for a minimum amount of maintenance. The gases and the cooling water enters it from the back uh, and the powder through the powder hose. Now the powder is carried uh, with the help of carrier gas, which is nitrogen or argon, and it enters the gun uh, also from the back and it gets mixed inside with the flame, which uh, heats it very effectively and it propels it with a great speed on a powder on a substrate. The powder is propelled through the chamber and impacts on a substrate with a great speed. Uh, the speeds are anywhere from 1200 to uh, uh, 1800 feet per second, which uh, makes which uh, allows us to create very dense uh, coatings, which are oxide free also. With a Top Gun console, uh, we can use a variety of fuel gases uh, for different applications. For example, we can use propylene, propane, acetylene, and hydrogen. Now, this gives the user a variety of uh, possibilities. If they cannot get certain gas, they can go with a different thing. Now, switch in gas uh, doesn't necessitate any change of hardware, either in a gun or in a console. Now, the gas is entered the console from below. It's all labeled very clearly, so the hookup procedure is very simple and straightforward. The console itself is of a semi-automatic type, which means that the operator enters all the parameter in, in a manual mode. Uh, and once all that is entered, you can switch to auto mode and the uh, whole system is activated with a push of a button. The Top Gun currently uses four different types of nozzles. They are 0 millimeter, 12 millimeter, 19 millimeter, and 22 millimeter. Now basically the only difference uh, that I'm talking about is the chamber size inside the nozzle. I'll give you an example. If you go in with a material that has a really low melting point, you would want to use a 0 millimeter nozzle. What that means is that the chamber inside here is very short powder enters the chamber and it doesn't have time to dwell in here and it shoots right out. Therefore, if you have a low melting uh, point material, it, it will not get stuck in the back here. But if you go to ceramic, you will want to go with 22 millimeter, which uh, has a really large uh, chamber inside. Powder enters and it dwells in here for a certain period of time and then it goes out. It has a time to heat up and melt properly. Uh, the materials that we use with Top Gun are various. We go we can add anything from metals through tungsten carbides through ceramics. Pete Andrades holds an associate degree in electronic technology combined with extensive in-house corporate training and has been associated with customer services for the past eight years. He's been directly involved with quality control and the engineering staff for new product development and improvements for existing products. Pete is dedicated to providing the customer with service unsurpassed in our industry. The function of the uh, customer service department is main goal is of course to take care of the customers uh, after the fact uh, if the product has been in place. Um, we also do assisting of installations uh, throughout the world uh, other than the U.S. 
other places that we have installed uh, Top Gun systems include, uh, there's a system in Norway. We have one system in the Netherlands at the Commission of European Communities. Um, and we also have two systems in Australia. Uh, we do support those products here from the U.S. at this Appleton location. Um, we pride ourselves as uh, being some of the fast response. Um, probably uh, we can communicate to just about anywhere in the world uh, in less than 24 hours, uh, usually rectifying the situation uh, in many cases in less than three days throughout the entire world. The department consists of myself and Mr. Alan Hildebrand, um, answering the telephones, troubleshooting situations with customers uh, as to the operation of the equipment and the service and maintaining the equipment. Um, we, also have we are also in charge of the test, final testing of the product. Um, each piece of equipment goes through a thorough and complete product testing uh, to which our engineering and our department has established goals and guidelines for. Our department is also responsible for the complete quality testing of all the Top Gun systems prior to leaving uh, our facility. Um, we check to, make, to ensure that they meet all engineering specifications and that uh, each system functions properly. Um, our department is also responsible for installations of these systems, also uh, product training, and maintenance training to upkeep the uh, systems. We are also on call almost 24 hours a day, either myself or one of my personnel. Um, we can also uh, accommodate your needs in the event that you do have a problem. Um, we can usually be there within 48 hours um, through, throughout anywhere throughout the world. Um, we pride ourselves on fast response to any customer's needs and we maintain a very well supply of replacement parts and so on for the equipment uh, to ensure that we can keep this time fashion as short as possible. We would like you the customer to know that we are at your service uh, at any time and we look forward to working with you in the future. Thanks for your time and we look forward to doing business with you in the future. Miller Thermal, Appleton, Wisconsin, USA.